Welcome, dead and lovely listeners, to a bold new foray of adventure in dead and lovely podcasting. It's the first ever dead and lovely live and in person. Live and ugly. <laughs> because Hollywood Steve is no longer Hollywood Steve. He is East Coastin. Mountain Steve. <laughs> Mountain Steve. What y'all say about that? <laughs> and so now that we're here in person, we can do everything that we always want to do. We can we can sing and it'll be in time. Celebrate good times. Come on. Na, 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 na. See how good it's that was? A celebration. Whenever we make a joke, we can high five. Oh, that was like a really good high five. It might not have picked up, but it was so good. Reach across the table. Also, we can stare at each other the whole time. This is getting Awesome. <laughs> we can freestyle rap. <gasps> is it a rap? A rap? A rap? This is a horror rap. Freddy Krueger. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, no, Freddy. Oh, my God. I wish we could do it this way every fucking time, <laughs> as I'm sure our listeners do as well. So, Steve, what are you doing here in town in my neck of the woods? Um, I'm out here trying to... Uh, you know, spend some time with the family. Yeah. Yeah. Came to see my wife's family, my own family. Had some times. Also came to a pretty awesome Halloween party. Oh, shit. At whose abode? It was yours. It was at I my was house? I was in this very house a few nights ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, were, you were the guy in the full inflatable uh, S&M gear, right? Yeah. I was the guy who had the that huge butt plug yeah. that I kept asking people to pump up more, <laughs> and nobody would take me up on my offer. I don't know why. Me and my buddy Luke are always talking about that. There's those videos that surfaced on YouTube a while back of like, I think it's called like Mr. Inflatable or something uh-huh. like this. They're just they're just strange to watch. If that's your thing, that's fine. But the fact mm-hmm. that they're they like popped up on YouTube. You just gotta. Well, maybe you don't have to see them sometimes. <laughs> Life's probably better if you just don't. I guess. You know what? I'm I'm gonna look them up, Mister Inflatable. <laughs> As we record this, it is just a scant few days. Actually, it's just technically the day after Halloween. November first, All Hallows Eve yesterday. What did you do for the actual day of Halloween? Um, not the ancient much. day of Samhain. The ancient day of Samhain. Uh, went and hung out with uh, a friend. We watched. Baba Duke again. Yeah. First time she had seen it, but uh, I watched it again for maybe the third or fourth time. I find that to be a movie. pretty enjoyable movie. It's awesome. I think the kid in it isn't irritating at all. Not at all. You know what? <laughs> Every time I see that kid, I think, boy, I'd love to have kids. <laughs> I think the only time that I've ever said that is like uh, that that girl on that Facebook live or, or Facebook kind of viral video. That girl is like, I smell like beef. Oh my god, that girl's adorable. If I could be guaranteed to have that kid, I smell like beef. I would have that kid, dude. Yeah. you're winning. You're winning. Mm-hmm. God damn it, hey, that friends. kid rules. Oh, dude, yeah, she's the best. Yeah, that kid's the best. So that's about the only time that I think I've actually said that. Baba Duke is cool though. I Baba Duke is great. We also watched Zombie Beavers. Don't know if you've ever seen that one. I have not seen the Zombie Beavers. Tell me Zom about Beavers that. Zombie Beavers is awesome. It's um, basically the same idea of any as any of those critter movies okay. that came out after uh, Gremlins, but the critters are zombie beavers. <laughs> They're beavers who have been toxic wasteized, of course, and turned into zombies. Um, and it, it's it's funny. It's supposed to be funny. It's a yeah. short movie. It's an hour and nineteen minutes. It's well That's worth it. It's got Bill Burr in the opening and the closing as uh, a very strange character. Okay, yeah. It's funny. I, I like guess they, uh, do they chew through some people? They do. <laughs> they chew through all sorts of stuff. And also, uh, uh, at least one person turns into a zombie beaver after getting bitten by a zombie beaver. You can be a person and get bitten by the zombie beaver and mm-hmm. become a zombie beaver person. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like in the movie we're talking about today when Tom Savini gets his head chopped off and then he turns into that huge rat. It looks similar. That he does. Uh-huh. He does that. Because today we're going to be talking about good old... From Dusk Till Dawn, uh, which is what, 93, 94? 96. 96, maybe? Yeah. I was getting there. I was getting January closer. 19th, 1996. Awesome. I'll tell you, I've been watching a couple of flicks myself in honor of the Halloween time. What it was. We watched a Beetlejuice the other night. Beetlejuice is awesome. Uh, it is. That's one of my wife's absolute favorites. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't love it like a lot of people do. Okay. I don't exactly know why. There's stuff about it that I really like. Is it because you're a communist sympathizer? 
or or the homeschooling. Hmm. Are you now, or have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? I plead the fifth. <laughs> fifth. <laughs> but I don't know what the deal is. Like, there's there's stuff about it that I like a lot. Like mm-hmm. Michael Keaton is ridiculously yeah, fucking so awesome. awesome. Uh-huh. The special effects and stuff are amazing. Uh-huh. Like, especially that waiting room scene. Yes. Where it's all the people that have been uh-huh. like run over by cars and set on fire and shit. That's awesome, and there's some really funny stuff in it, but I don't know why. It just does not really jive with me. I get it. You know, like, uh, anytime I watch a movie everybody loves and I don't I don't love it, Yeah. I, I feel like maybe what it is is that too, you've built up too much. Mm-hmm. Like, you think, oh, everybody loves this. I'm going to watch it, and it's just going to grab me immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody loves it because, it, you know, they saw it without any real foreknowledge of it. And then sure. they saw it, and they were like, oh, this is way cooler than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, no kidding. Sometimes the expectation can really ruin stuff like that. Really can. If you've had a million people tell you it's the best thing ever. You Absolutely. Go in, yeah, want it to be the best. Um, so we watched that. We watched, uh, I've been watching the new episodes of South Park lately, too. Oh, yeah? I, uh, I think I've seen two of them. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the one where uh, uh, Cartman kept talking to Alexa, which apparently made uh-huh. people's yeah. Amazon <laughs> things at home go off, which is awesome. Which is awesome, and you know that they planned it that way, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been good. I think we were on like the fourth or fifth episode now. We just watched the Halloween episode okay. last night. I haven't seen it. It's really, really, really good. Awesome. Um, Randy and a bunch of other dudes are a coven of witches. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. awesome. I've liked this season though, and I'm kind of glad that like they decided to end the the serialization of the show. Yeah, yeah, that was fun for one season. The second season, yeah. I didn't get it as much. Yeah, I guess the last season. Yeah, the I member don't berries get and PC stuff. principle. Yeah, you know, it was it was one of those characters. that's like this would have been fine for an episode or two. Yeah. but it's been several years now. Yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Like, yeah. I. <sighs> Maybe I've just never run into that guy. Yeah. I've never met the dude who seems like he's a frat bro yeah. who's also into social justice. Yeah, social justice bro dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's um yeah, that that last season with the member berries and stuff, it was it was okay and everything, but mm-hmm. what the serialization aspect of doing South Park that way really took away is that They've always been so awesome about, you know, some current event happens mm-hmm. and then that week they're putting out an episode about it. Yeah. And yeah, and when you're serializing it, you have to connect it back to the rest of the story. Yeah, That's exactly. A bit exactly. Harder. So it loses the spontaneity, which I think has always been one of the best parts about that show. So I'm glad that they got away from that. And I, yeah. honestly, I'm kind of glad that they're not doing it all political because I think really at this point it would just be sad. They'd have too much material to work with mm-hmm. if it was just parroting everything happening in the fucking government. Here's, here's one problem I do have with South Park. And I never thought I'd have it with South Park yeah. because when South Park came out, I was in high school. Sure. Um, and we all recognized that Cartman was an asshole. Mm-hmm. But I don't think most of the people who watch South Park now <laughs> recognize <laughs> that Cartman, it. you're not supposed to be like him or <laughs> enjoy him. Like you're supposed to be think he's funny. Yeah. But in the sense that he's a terrible tool and yeah. nobody would ever want to be around him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now, yeah, I think you're right. I think that people are missing that you're not supposed to enjoy that character. Yeah. But it's all, I mean, that's also a problem with Rick and Morty fans, too. People mm. thinking like, oh, like Rick, I'm smart like Rick, and I'm an alcoholic rec- like Rick, so yeah. I'm also cool? <laughs> no, you're not. You're just an asshole. Rick's an asshole, but he's not real. I still have never watched all that stuff, man. That's you one should? of those. Yeah, everybody's told me, yourself mm-hmm. included, that I should really fucking sit down and watch it. It's, a, it's a great show. The fandom's terrible. Not not everybody, but a lot of the fans are just terrible people that don't get that they're being made fun of. Yeah. Is it kind of like if you turn Tool into a cartoon? It's exactly like <laughs> you turn Tool into a cartoon. It's like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. And you talk about it with one person and you're like, I hate that person. Yeah. Am I that person? Oh, my God. Yeah, I yeah. think if you don't know that person, you are that person. Yeah. So, luckily, I know that person. So, I am not that person. <laughs> I do not have a wubba lubba dub dub uh, ringtone. Uh, I don't get... People still have ringtones, Ben. That's a thing. People are like, I want to be amused by what my tone is. I uh-huh. want to personalize it and make it part of who I am. I want the mall to be my ringtone. Yeah. <laughs> So one of these days, I'll get around to just sitting down and watching that. Maybe when we stop watching so many damn good movies for our show, including today's, which is kicking off, No Vampire. Well, 
It's not kicking it off. It's continuing, no vampire. Bram Stoker's <laughs> kicked it off. Don't mind me. I'm just 50% of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Editing that for sure. Um, so yeah, we're getting into from dusk till dawn, and boy, uh, just as a, a slight intro into from dusk till dawn, and as a way of um, letting anyone know if the, if they're ever like, hey, you've been out in Hollywood for a few years. When's your movie coming out? Hey, Steve, when's your movie coming out, Hollywood? Huh? <laughs> here's here's just a real, real interesting story about from dusk till dawn. This is the first. Um, screenplay that Quentin Tarantino wrote for money. Really? He got paid $1,500 by Robert Kurtzman and his uh, production company. Um, so you're telling me Robert Kurtzman was like, hey, Quentin, here's some change. Write me this vampire movie. Well, Quentin Tarantino had already written Natural Born Killers and Reservoir okay, Dogs, but yeah. he wrote those on spec, which every single script I have has been written on spec. Yeah. He had read them and thought they were great. He had this idea for this movie at a 24-page treatment. Mm -hmm. He met Quentin Tarantino. He read those scripts, and he thought, I'll get this guy to write this uh, movie for me. Mm -hmm. Quentin Tarantino wrote it. This was around 1990. Okay. Wow. Um, Quentin Tarantino had nothing out at this point. Not even uh, True Not, Romance? Uh, True Romance, I think, came out in 90, didn't it? 91, maybe? I think so, yeah. yeah. So he, he had nothing out by the time that he had finished this. Wow. Then, you know, he started getting this sort of rush of success. Yeah. With, you know, selling True Romance, uh, directing Reservoir Dogs, selling Natural Morning Killers, uh, directing Pulp Fiction. Yeah. And they were trying to get this movie made. So he had had all that success before this is even yeah. started filming. Yeah, but while the, all that while they were still trying to get this made, jeez, and nobody was buying it until uh, Pulp Fiction came out. Yeah, and that kind of just sort of cemented it when they got Robert Rodriguez on their side. Right, he had just done Desperado, which is awesome. Yeah, they got Robert Rodriguez. They had Quentin Tarantino pin the script. Miramax. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, bum, bum. <laughs> yeah, the Weinstein Company. Uh, yeah, Miramax. The Insidious. Uh huh. They're bad, bad folks over bad there. Bad people. But uh, they made. They decided to make this. <laughs> it's real interesting. Just before selling this to Miramax, mm -hmm. they actually had a meeting with the Tales from the Crypt people, mm -hmm. and this was uh, they were working on a follow up to Demon Knight. Okay. And they yeah. were interested in the script, uh -huh. but they didn't have Robert Rodriguez attached yet, and so they didn't buy it, but then they ended up basically making it with uh -huh. Bordello of Blood, which came out in August of 96. Bordello of Blood is about a bordello full of vampires, not a strip club full of vampires. So is that similar? Yeah. It's insane how similar it is. I've actually never seen Bordello of Blood before. Is it any good? I saw it once. It's got Dennis Miller in it. And you know who is an uncharismatic lead for a movie? Probably Dennis Miller. Dennis Miller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hate, though, that like now every time you're watching a flick and you see the Weinstein company come up, you just go, oh, God damn it. That's going to keep happening. Yeah. I mean, I think after, you know, we covered Jeepers Creepers and we talked about that. Yeah. And just last week we covered a Francis Ford Coppola movie. He's been enabling Victor yeah, Salva. Yeah, clearly. Um, covering, you know, a uh, Miramax movie for the first time. We're going to keep finding out that a lot of uh, terrible people are behind a lot of movies we love. Yeah, that's what it seems. It seems like I'm noticing a pattern. Yeah. Very awful people uh -huh. end up in positions of power. That's strange. It's almost <laughs> like they seek them out so yeah, that they exactly. can use that power to get what they want. And do, which is usually something bad. Like maybe grab someone by the pussy. It could be that. Yeah. Did you see like the Kevin Spacey shit that just. Yes, I did. And you know what? Um, that's, that's one of those things that's been rumored for years. Yeah. That he's gay uh, and that he propositions people who are underage. It's been yeah. rumored for years. And guess what? It was true. Um, yeah. the reason it was rumored for years is because the people who were saying it were less famous than him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it just doesn't really matter at that point. Yeah. So if you're less famous than someone and you tell a hard truth, it, you must just be seeking attention. Yeah. It's, um, well, that's a vicious thing that I kept hearing about like the Weinstein situation, all that stuff too, is it's just like, if you speak out against this guy, you're absolutely going to get blackballed and never work in Hollywood again. Yeah. It's, it's way fucked up. 
I mean, it, it is the negative when you get a bunch of creatives together and then throw yeah. money in. Because um, you're going to want to overlook some things. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, say, for, for instance, in engineering, mm-hmm. uh, if you're an engineer and you're a pure, absolute asshole, mm-hmm. you can be replaced just next year when someone graduates with their engineering yeah, degree. Yeah, totally, yeah. When you're a creative... You can't just be replaced. No, uh uh-uh. Like, your vision is different. Yeah. It's always going to be different, and people are going to be willing to overlook more stuff. Yeah. Which is why creative people have to take that and recognize that it's it's their responsibility to not do that bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever your role, don't be a piece of shit. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way to be, in my opinion. I mean, but also, uh, Andy Dick got fired off of something... uh, just yesterday and i read the accusations and i was like that's andy dick you hired andy dick like what do you mean <laughs> turned out he was a bad guy it turns out andy dick will just come up and grab you by the crotch and lick your face yeah that's, yeah, that's exactly what i would expect yeah that's why you hire andy dick i what? gotta say though mad props for netflix to being like yeah hey we just found out you're a shitty person even though this is one uh-huh. of our most popular and We're probably largest production. grossing shows yeah, yeah. So, fuck it pull the plug boys mm-hmm. that sucks for uh robin wright who very likely could have won another emmy yeah no kidding because she's awesome uh it sucks for everybody involved that yeah. one shitty person brought it down but... yeah really well i saw somebody uh my buddy Bijan on facebook the other day man he was like okay so you're telling me that netflix canned an entire show because one of their actors behaved inappropriately. So what you're telling me is that a Hollywood actor is being held to higher standards than the president of the United States of yeah. America. A Hollywood actor <laughs> pretending to be president of the United States yeah. held to a higher standard than the actual, actual president. president. Yeah. yeah, it's like, God diggity damn, man. That's insane. But hey, maybe this wave will just keep washing over us and that, that will go down where people are just like, no, you can't say you're going to grab somebody by the pussy and yeah. then get any presidential votes. Um, Yeah, you would think that that would be... But again, this is... A generation of people that are like, Cartman's so fun. Ha, 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 ha. I'll go vote now. Duh. I love Cartman. Oh, my God, dude. It's like, <laughs> this is how you end up with a fucking meme for a president. <laughs> it totally is. Jesus, dude. Well, one of the coolest things about From Dust Till Dawn is the absolutely gargantuan cast that it's got inhabits some awesome people that, in this it. movie. It's got a huge cast. It's one of those ones where you're watching it. And it's like every new character that pops up, you're like, whoa, he's in here. Whoa, she's in here. Yeah. Whoa, vampires. It's so cool. Yeah, it is awesome. So I think before we get into our movie review portion, uh, I'd like to spend a little bit of time here, Steve, talking with you about what your favorite movies from some of these big name Hollywood stars, the stars of Hollywood and the silver screen. <laughs> <laughs> the silver screen. <laughs> so let's talk about our favorite flicks and some of the stars of this movie. Now, one of the main cats in this flick is a man named Jorge Clooney. Yeah, yep. I first became aware of him when my mom was having hot flashes for him on, the, on the ER. Oh, boy. Son, could you go get the smelling salts? Mama's got the vapors. <laughs> You guys kept a lot of smelling salts around, right? Yeah, pretty much. And my yeah. mom sounded like a, an old plantation owner woman. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> As God is her witness, she'll never go hungry again. <laughs> what is your favorite uh, Jorge Clooney movie, you know, Steve? There are a lot of great Jorge Clooney movies. He's been movies. in a lot of good flicks. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The one I'm I'm going to pick here is The Descendants. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I love that's the a great flick it is a great flick a lot of really good people in it co-written by Dean Pelton himself who's Dean Jim Pel- Rash oh shit for real yeah co-written by is uh, Nat Faxon and Jim Rash wrote holy uh, shit or adapted the novel to the screen so I did not know that it's awesome I really like because uh, one of the things that people often say about George Clooney is yeah. that he he's He's got a couple of, of tricks, mm-hmm. and his charm gets him by. Yeah. I don't think that's true. No. But I think in The Descendants, especially, he he goes outside of his comfort zone. I think he's fucking awesome. That's the, uh, just to make sure I'm on the right track the Hawaii, here. The Hawaiian yeah. one. Yes, exactly. I fucking love that movie. That part where he pulls the car over and turns around to that kid, and he's like, do you get hit a lot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought that a lot with that kid. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> he and seems I, like he would get hit a lot. I seem to say that in my head about people all the time anymore. I'm like, you must get fucking decked all the time, yeah. dude. That is a really, really good flick. I like that one a lot, too. Definitely worth watching. Now, I'd say my favorite Clooney flick mm. is a little one called Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? A constant sorrow. I don't See, uh-huh. that's the point where I should have jumped in and sang with you because we're we can do it now. Nah, 
No. You want the solo spot. Too late. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that song specifically is for one solo singer. And it's and it's Hollywood Steve. Yeah. Appalachian Steve. Yeah. Oh Brother Where Art Thou is seriously one of uh, my favorite Coen Brothers yeah, movies. And, absolutely. And a lot of people would disagree on yeah. that one. Uh, I think I always found that everybody in the South that I knew loved that movie. Oh, yeah. But you move outside of the South and people are like, I don't really get it, etc. Like, yeah, it probably soars over your head if you didn't grow yeah. up around a lot of like old-timey South uh-huh. people, you know? Because like, the way that they talk in the movie, I think the dialogue in that movie is just fucking pure. It's art. amazing. It's unbelievable. Every uh-huh. line in that movie is fucking hilarious mm-hmm. or interesting or novel in some kind of way. Tim Blake Nelson is my favorite part for sure. Which one's he? Uh, he's the dumb one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. We well, um, was fixing to fornicate, too. That's one of my favorite <laughs> we lines. We thought you was a toad. <laughs> There's so many good lines. I hate fire. Like, dude, my hair. There's so much shit in that yeah. movie. That Dude, that part in the middle where they get caught in the barn, he says, damn, we're in a tight spot. Damn, like, we're in a tight spot. A hundred times in a row. Come on, boys. Let's R-U-N-N-O-F-T. Fuck, man. Yeah. I, that's one of the most immensely quotable movies ever. I've seen it a million times, and it's one of those, like, anytime it's on, I won't press stop. Yeah. Always yeah, a good watch. Absolutely. I'll, I'll watch it till the end, no problem. Well, let's talk a little bit about Juliette Lewis. Juliette Lewis, old crazy person, Scientology, has a rock band, Juliette she Lewis. She does have a rock band, that's for sure. Um, And also, she's got a southern accent, despite the fact that she was born in Los Angeles, California. What? And her dad's from New Jersey. Don't know where she got this southern accent from. Where's mama from? I don't know. She She's not famous enough to have a Wikipedia page. So. <laughs> <laughs> a mystery. Yeah. Um. I like Juliette Lewis a lot. I yeah. actually love her in this movie. I oh, think she's awesome. This is one of her best performances. But I think so, too. If, um, if I'm picking my favorite movie she's in, it's Natural Born Killers. Fuck, yeah. It's been so long since I watched that, dude. I guarantee if I watched it now, I would think it was less awesome. Okay. Um. It was one of those that I really loved in the 90s. It seemed really revolutionary to yep. me. And, like, you know, the strange use of different effects. Yep. Like, sometimes there's animation. Sometimes it goes black and white. Oh, it's nutty, dude. Like, the slowed slowed down bullet cam yeah. in the beginning. Like, the soundtrack stuff. A lot of cool stuff. Quentin Tarantino didn't like the adaptation of his script. Yeah. Um, Robert Downey Jr. is great in it. Woody Harrelson's amazing. But Juliette Lewis is just fucking unchained in it. And yeah. I think she's awesome. Yeah, she is awesome. I need to watch that again, dude. I mean, that's kind of horror enough. We could cover that on the show at some point. Probably, yeah. Absolutely. It's pretty fucked up. It's very fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I think uh, my my absolute favorite Juliette Lewis movie, Every time, every time I think of Juliette Lewis, I cannot not think about motherfucking Christmas Vacation. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> She's absolutely awesome. That, that movie is great. If you don't like that movie, just go fuck yourself. <laughs> really, like if you don't like that movie, go fuck yourself. Yeah, like seriously, if I think about because I, you know, European Vacation, all, all the yeah. other ones, I'm just like, oh, eh, whatever. But yeah, Christmas same. Vacation is a, it's a good movie. It's a great Christmas movie. Fuck yeah. I mean, Christmas Story is my favorite Christmas movie. Ah, okay, but. I would say that's maybe number two. Yeah. Maybe Nightmare Before Christmas. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I would say Christmas Vacation is, is my number one yeah. jam of jams. You got to watch it at least once, preferably sure. twice every year. Yeah. Again, every line is quotable. Her character is just like kind uh-huh. of a hard ass that does not really give a shit about anything that's going on. Uh-huh. Which also, is great. a young Elaine in there. Julia Louis Dreyfus. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. Margo. Uh-huh. <laughs> Where did all the water come from, Todd? I don't know, Margo. <laughs> They're so good, dude. Oh, it's so fucking good. Yeah, so that's my number one. Now, one of our other cats that we got floating around in this flick is the man, the legend, the wolf, Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel. He's one of those guys. I was going through his IMDb page before we started recording, trying to find what my favorite flick of his would be. That guy has been in so many movies. Yeah. So many movies. Yeah. He's he's in everything. Yeah. And like sometimes he just sort of falls in the background like you don't even notice. Harvey Keitel was in that movie. Yeah. Because he, he can really he can really absorb into a character or like in this movie, he can be Harvey Keitel playing a character. Yeah, absolutely yeah. so. Well which is kinda how he was like as the wolf and yeah, stuff. As the wolf, too. Yeah, like he he's he's got uh, he's definitely got a, a way about him that, like, you know him, like, say, Reservoir Dogs yeah. or Pulp Fiction or or this movie or, I don't know, maybe even Bad Lieutenant. Like, you, oh, you yeah. watch him and it's just like, yeah, that's Harvey Keitel. But then you see him in other stuff and it's like, 
the piano, for instance. Yeah. Like how he just sort of disappears into the role. Totally. So I think he's fucking awesome. Just a really, really, really wonderful, and I think very underrated, underrated actorsman. Yeah. So what's your favorite movie he's in, babe? Man, I'm gonna have to go with fucking Copland. I think Copland, Copland. is an incredible flick, man. So it's definitely Sylvester Stallone's best movie. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you've never seen that flick. And I'm sitting here saying it's you know a cop movie with Sylvester Stallone. You might be conjuring up ideas of what it must be like. It is not what you it's like. Not it's not like what you're that thinking at all. At all. Uh-uh. Sylvester Stallone. I don't know. I think he's wearing a fat suit, but yeah, he plays yeah. a fat cop in it. And he's like real beat down and yeah. like just kind of like a, a whip dog the whole yeah. movie and stuff. He's not a hard ass. Harvey Keitel is in there, and it is a mm-hmm. it is an incredibly powerful movie. Again, yeah. kind of about people in positions of power abusing their, exactly. their status and stuff. So yeah. kind of goes right along with what we've been talking about. Yeah. Um, I would say Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, dude. absolutely. Reservoir Dogs is amazing, and he is so awesome. I mean. That was my introduction to Tim Roth and my introduction oh, yeah. to Harvey Keitel. Yes. I remember like just seeing both of them and, and being like, oh my God, yeah. this is insane. Yeah, dude. Um, I'm fucking dying, man. I'm yeah. dying. You're not going to die. <laughs> Say the fucking words. <laughs> yeah, it's a real good. That is a badass movie. And that's mm-hmm. one of those ones too. Like I love flicks like that or like, um, have you ever seen A History of Violence? Uh-huh. Where it, or, or even Drive, you could point out, where most of the movie is like really chill. Uh-huh. But then something just heinously violent yeah. will happen, and it just fucking blows your hair back. Yeah, history of violence is awesome. Oh my I god, love, dude. I love when it's just suddenly like, oh, he's a fucking badass. Yeah, dude. Yeah, is that Cronenberg? <laughs> yes, Cronenberg. Yeah. I always forget about that. Yeah, huh. it's insane. Probably his least weird movie. movie. Yeah, Cronenberg yeah. movie. Yeah. yeah, for sure, man. That sure. and Eastern Promises. He did Eastern I've never Promises seen that. as well. That's a good one, too. Doesn't it star Viggo Mortensen's dick? It does. It stars Viggo Mortensen's dick in a sauna. <laughs> so it's floaty. Fighting. Yeah. <laughs> now, another one of our uh, of our main stars of this flick is uh, the man, the myth, the director, <laughs> <laughs> Quintum Tarantinum's. Oh, yeah. Now, that guy, of course, we know is the director of Pulp Fiction, all kinds of other amazing stuff. Kill Bill. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Some of the best movies, really, of the we past We know for his love years. of the N-word. Yeah, and his love of, of feet, which we'll... Oh, yeah, we'll talk we'll about that. discuss more, because <laughs> that's a big feature of this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also likes to put himself in his own flicks um, a lot, which uh-huh. sometimes sometimes is cool. And, sometimes works. And sometimes really doesn't. Sometimes no. it's like when M. Night Shyamalan puts himself in his movies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, yes. And you find out that he's a robot. Who doesn't know that contractions exist? Spoilers! Pay attention to every single M. Night Shyamalan movie. I don't think there's a single contraction. No way. Everyone says, I cannot. Not, I can't. I do really? not. Really? Yeah. Like, not just his character. All not just his character. What the fuck? It's insane. He, it's like he's Data. Data can't use contractions, in case you don't know. <laughs> I like to think there's a, like a bumper sticker on the back of the Enterprise that says "Data don't contract." Data don't contract, That's motherfucker. So funny. Maybe Shyamalan's like father was killed by a contraction. Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! It was Weave. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I did not notice that. So Tarantino has a habit of stick himself in his movies. What's uh? But he's in other stuff too. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite flick he's appeared in? Well, my favorite movie he's been in would probably be different than my favorite role he's played. But my okay. favorite role he's played, I guess, would be Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Because I think it's the one most like himself. Yeah. Bonnie buys shit. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's just Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> yeah. That's also that is also my favorite flick yeah. that, that he's appeared in as yeah. well. Because anything else like. In this, he's not bad at all. I no. think he's fine. I think, you know, casting him actually works great because he plays creepy really well. Oh, extremely well, But then, dude. you know, you think of, like, uh, Django Unchained yeah. and his ridiculous <laughs> Australian accent. accent. Yeah, fuck that. That's real bad. <laughs> yeah, so Pulp Fiction is definitely my choice. Who's the next on our list here? Well, um, we got Selma Hayek. Oh, yeah. Who uh, we'll talk about 
probably too much and too creepily later, but probably Selma Hayek is fucking awesome. Yep. Uh, this is one of her earliest roles, other than Desperado. She yep, was yep. she was in telenovelas in Mexico, but uh, as far as English language stuff, it was yep. Desperado and then this basically. Pretty much, and I I think that she is fucking awesome. Obviously, she is one of the one of the more gorgeous creatures that Cthulhu oh, yeah, has so ever made. She yeah, and just so you know, she was 29 while they were filming this movie. God damn, really? Yeah. Uh, so she's she's what 50 something now. Gosh, that's insane, Still man. Still looks great. Yeah, and also too like. She just seems like a fucking cool as shit person. She really does. The yep. role she chooses, I mean, like doing the uh, Frida Kahlo movie and stuff, uh-huh. and then just the interviews and stuff I've seen with her, she just seems like a legit good hang. So yep. I think she seems just like an overall awesome person. What's your favorite thing she's appeared in? 30 Rock. 100%. 30 Rock. Yep. Holy shit, yeah, she was in 30 Rock. Uh-huh, Elisa Pedrera. Yes. She's, uh, she's so good in that. My favorite line, uh, one of my favorite lines from 30 Rock, yep. and my favorite line she's ever said is, I'm uh, uh, Coco for Cuckoo Poops. <laughs> uh-huh. I forgot about that. Uh-huh. Dude, I need to watch 30 Rock again, because that's one of those ones that like, that was kind of our go-to. Mm-hmm. It's really late at night. Just we, turn it on. Yeah, just yeah. turn something on. It's like we have about you know half an hour before it's time to go to bed. Yep. Whatever, well, it's 30 Rock. That's also usually about the time of night that I am. Quite inebriated. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I think we watched all of it, and I probably remember like half of it. Yeah. That's the great thing about about being a pretty regular drinker. You get so much more mileage out oh, of your shows. Man. Hey, kids, drink more. <laughs> I, I listen, drink more, and hey, Uncle Steven may not do it. Uncle Ben may not do it. Uh, we, we might. Smoke weed. No. It's good no, for not you. that. <laughs> it'll, make, it'll make your mind like a... Like a really, like a really open hold sieve <laughs> where everything so just, just kind of pours, pours through and then there's a little bit left over. And then the next time you watch it, you're like, I think I've seen this. Yeah, deja vu, dude. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, so I definitely need to watch 30 Rock again. That's one of my absolute, absolute favorite shows. What's your favorite role she was in? Motherfucking Desperado. Desperado. Rado, why don't you come to your senses? Yeah. I was I was giving it some Despacito there. I was really a little good. Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh God, is that what that is? Yeah. Oh Ugh. man. But he he totally uh, was really into that song. You can tell by the video you can find of him saying uh, cheese burrito instead of Despacito. <laughs> yeah. I think easily uh, that doesn't even come close to the absolute best you know Spanish language album by an English speaking singer. Is? Fucking all of David Lee Ross stuff, like Eat Him and Smile, he's put out in Spanish too. That's it. For real, dude. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. You can you can watch like Spanish language versions of everything David on Eat Him and Smile. Ross. Yeah. Just going to town. Uh-huh. Diamond Dave. Diamond Dave. Woo! I love okay. Des- I love Desperado though. And the whole mood the whole story about how that was made by Robert Rodriguez, who played a huge part in making Dustle Dawn, uh-huh. is nuts. He made that movie for Nothing, yeah. and so many of the special effects and stunts and stuff you see there are yeah. done in the most stupidly practical yeah. ways, just to keep the budget down. Like it's uh, it's mentioned in um, a pretty great uh, book about making digital and indie movies. I can't oh. remember the name of the book, but it's called a Rodriguez list, where you just make a list of cool shit you have access to like yeah. cool cars guns okay uh, spaces etc and then you write a movie based on that using so you can use those things that's badass yeah it, it really works for low budget and like digital video stuff it's cool no doubt that's really cool yeah i love that flick man so um i think the next one that we got on our list that we got to mention here is old danny trejo danny trejo motherfucking whoa, whoa, whoa. machete Machete himself, he's badass that, himself. He's that guy that you you might not ever recognize, but you know because he's a huge Mexican guy with the lady on his chest. Yeah, if you don't recognize him by at this point, though, it's like you must just be looking past him because he's in everything. He's in fucking everything. Yeah, when we looked him up on IMDb, how many he had like three hundred like three hundred eighty something roles yeah. he's been it's in. Insane. Man. It's insane. Yeah, he's been in a lot of great shit for sure. Uh, he was in Con Air. Uh-huh. Definitely. Uh, what was it? Uh, Johnny 23 or something because oh, he yeah. killed 23 people. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, he's been in a lot of interesting roles for sure. I hear that NASA actually used his uh, facial complexion as uh-huh. inspiration for the surface of Mars in the pictures they faked. Yeah, the pictures they faked. Very craggy. Yeah. Well, they had to fake it because they have the, all those kids they molest up there. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, duh, yeah. on mm-hmm. the Mars base. Yeah. Uh, my favorite Danny Trejo role is probably Breaking Bad. 
Yeah, dude. Tortuga. Fuck yeah, Tortuga. Yeah. But uh, he's been in so much stuff. It's real hard to to pick one. I I picked that one specifically because I love Breaking Bad. Shit, yeah. Uh, also, he has Trejo's Tacos. If anyone living in L.A. right now, within the sound of my voice, oh, go to Trejo's Tacos. Get some street corn. Get a, a fish taco. They got some good stuff. Look, yeah, I've heard. I've been hearing that street corn is just taking the nation by storm. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought that tossing some butter and mayonnaise and, uh, and some, some chili lime powder, or something? some lime, yeah, onto s- some grilled corn? It's Look, fucking delicious. That Mexican corn's coming in, stealing the jobs of, uh, our, hard of our regular old hard working boiled corn that we all love so much. Where the hell's canned corn gonna go? You can't oh, sell that on the street. Canned corn's the best stuff they ever was. The <laughs> best they ever will be. <laughs> Dude, that's like... Why do people like canned vegetables? Fuck. I don't know that why people like them? them. They're just used yeah. to them. My, my entire family, like, growing up, because I've heard this bullshit my entire life that Southern cooking is the best... Some southern cooking is the best. Yeah. Most of it's bullshit. Most of it's fucking horrible, dude. Most of it is canned stuff, including canned meat. Oh, we ate a lot ugh, of canned lot meat of po- growing potted up. Potted meat products Fuck and stuff. That. Fuck all that shit, dude. Um, but yeah, uh, elote asada, Ooh. grilled corn, yeah. deliciousness. Well, I'll, have try to, I'll have to check out a Trejo taco at some point. Now, I think that my favorite Trejo jam has got to be the Devil's Rejects. Oh, yeah. I think the only really good Rob Zombie movie, if you ask me. It's the the only really good one. Yeah. I, I like some of his other stuff. Sure. But as far as really good movies that if somebody was like, Rob Zombie's never made a good movie, I'd be like, Devil's Rejects. I know. I know. And I feel like I have to explain it to people all the time. Because they're like, well, I saw House of a Thousand Corpses and it sucked. And it's like, yeah, it's well, nothing it like that. Yeah, it's nothing like that. I House actually of a Thousand saw... Corpses get, has some cool images, yeah. but it's not a cohesive movie. No. I actually saw Devil's Rejects first. Oh, okay. And I but think, you weren't uh, missing anything. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah, I think pretty much just like Brandon, my buddy Brandon, just explained. He's like, oh, there's this, there's this family that kills people and they've been mm-hmm. caught. So when the movie picks up, it's them escaping. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah. And, th- and that is really all that you need to know. It really is. And Trejo's in that movie, uh, not a huge part, but no. he's badass. And it's a fucking badass movie. It really is. A woman is made to wear the severed face of her bow. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Uh, no, I've never... You know, I've never had the desire to cut off my wife's <laughs> face and wear it. No, not once. Not now, not never. And so if that ever does happen, don't suspect me. <laughs> I don't want to do that's that. That's a solid alibi if you ask uh-huh. me. <laughs> so, I mean, that's those are all the big names. Though, uh, we're skipping over Cheech Marin. But <sighs> and our main man, Tom Savini. Yeah, skipping over Tom Savini. Though, to be honest... The Wizard of Gore. This might be his best role. Uh, yeah, I mean, overall, his, yeah. his part in this is absolutely yeah. unforgettable and his fucking awesome. His role in Maniac, like, he's charming in Maniac. But Disco he's only Boy. In it, yeah, he's only in it for a short period. Yeah, and he's in tons of other stuff that he's done special effects on, which is to say, basically, yeah. every movie. Listen to our Friday 13th episode. We talk about mm. our favorite Savini flicks. But this is the one where he's really... You can tell he got to have a lot of fun with that uh-huh. role and yeah. stuff, so he's well, really badass. And I think, because the... Um, Basically, what happened here was that uh, Quentin Tarantino got paid fifteen hundred dollars for the the script, but also K and B, which was uh, is uh, Robert Kurtzman, uh, Greg Nicotero, and Howard Berger's mm. uh, special effects house. Ah, Greg they Nicotero, a student of Tom. Yeah, Zimmer. yeah. They committed to do the effects for Reservoir Dogs, so the fifteen hundred dollars oh. was just a sort of cursory payment. Along with actually doing special effects huh. for Reservoir Dogs. But Greg Nic- Nicotero is a student of Tom Savini. That's why I'm assuming they got Tom Savini to be in this movie. Because Tight. otherwise it wouldn't make a ton of sense. I mean, Tom Savini's awesome in it. Yeah. But I don't know why anybody would be like, get Savini. Who <laughs> yeah. else can play Sex Machine? He's the man for the role. Yeah. And it's so funny, too, because whenever I saw this movie... I was really new to watching flicks and wasn't really into horror flicks and stuff back then either. So that was my first exposure to Tom Savini was in this movie. So okay. anytime I'd see him pop up in other stuff like Planet Terror or something like uh-huh. that, 
I was like, oh, it's Sex Machine. <laughs> it's like, I didn't know. You no, had no that's, idea. He had yeah. an entire other career. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and had, you know, shaped horror movies mm-hmm. as we know it through special effects and stuff. So that's kind yeah. of a funny thing. That's the first thing I knew him as a Sex Machine. And even in my head now, I see him, I'm like, Sex Machine. Sex Machine. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and the, the crotch gun had actually been done in Desperado. Oh, so yeah. it was actually a call back to that. Yeah. But it's so perfect in this. Like So badass, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I love that scene where he whips it out too, and then he kind of gives that look like, mm-hmm, "Yeah, what are you gonna do?" You seen, you seen my gun, Dick? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's so good. Yeah. Man. Now you know, Steve. Before we start getting into more of the movie, uh, the movie itself, I gotta, I gotta mention this being no vampire and all. We've got to talk about how our powerful podcasting oh, powers Jesus. of 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 us talking about stuff several weeks in advance, and then yeah. it happening. We we talked about the Delilah. Incident, R.I.P. We R. talked. R.I.P., yeah. We Not talked, D- Delilah didn't die. No. Yet. Uh-uh. Yet. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. SummerSlam. Life versus life match. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we had the Ric Flair incident where we ended up hospitalizing Ric Flair. On accident. But hey, I'll say it again. 15-time world champ. 14-time loser. Be, we're the one-time world champs. Uh-huh. Never dropping the title. <laughs> our, uh, we had two more instances of our, our podcast powers being this is just... insane. It, I mean, this time it's really getting kind of fucking eerie and strange. Yeah. So we we decided to do no vampire. I think probably in September. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah, and and then just uh, a few days ago, read that in Malawi. Yeah. If you don't know where Malawi is, it's in Africa. That's me. I don't know where it is. Yeah, it's in Africa. Uh, in Malawi, uh, eight people were killed <laughs> on suspicion of being vampires, <laughs> and they kicked the UN out. Holy shit. <laughs> they kicked the UN out so they could kill suspected vampires. Suspected vampires. Yeah. For God. real. That's Look what insane. we're doing by popularizing vampires and stuff. Yeah, they weren't popular before we're this. We're people killed. All these, all these movies are really obscure. They were just listening to our show. <laughs> That's true. In Malawi, they were listening to our show and they were like, no vampire. You're right. Let's get rid of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, we just lost, like, eight listeners. Shit. Oh, no. <laughs> no, but our listeners, in fact, are the people killing the vampires. And uh, Layoff, you guys, guys, please stop it. <laughs> please. Yeah. Please do stop. Yeah. Not listening to the show. Continue listening to the show. But then this one is just insane. This is man. the most bizarre one of all. So I'm scrolling through Facebook um, a couple days ago, and um, I run across an Arby's advertisement with Simon Belmont of Castlevania fame on it. And this is mere days after our Bram Stoker's episode came out where we were talking about there being an Arby's tie-in with Dracula. Yeah, we... What, this was... The most I, far-fetched, stupid bullshit we could have made up. Yeah, you can't possibly come up with the idea of combining roast beef and vampires. No! And then somebody at Arby's was like... You know what? Roast beef and vampires. Dude, maybe we got a fucking listener that works for Arby's. That makes sense. Send you know curly what? fries. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, for real. Send curly fries. And Jamocha shakes. Shamrock shakes. Oh, delish. <laughs> That's McDonald's again. Shit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Our powers have gone just way, way, way too far. We, it's it's insane. We I really do got to find a way to guide these things and use them for the powers of good. I uh, The thing we're going to hear next week is that uh, a coven of, of uh, vampires. Are they covens? What are they called? What's well, a group of vampires? All right, a coven of vampires will probably kill a bunch of people in a Mexican whorehouse. <laughs> What's the world coming to? You'll, you'll see, you'll see a guy in like a YouTube video yeah. who's got some vampire teeth, and he'll be like, "Donde está la putaria?" <laughs> and 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 then boom. Now I'm gonna tell you guys what: if you've never seen Desperado, don't. Or, sorry, fucking. If you've never seen From Dust Till Dawn, right. Do stop listening to this show. This and watch is... from Dust Till Dawn. And Desperado. And Desperado if you got time, yeah. <laughs> Make it a double feature. Because, <laughs> you know, the thing is, is like, this movie is one of those really, really, really special flicks that you can only see for the first time once. And it's the best going into it not knowing anything about it, which is how I saw this movie for the first time. Probably right. fucking 
15 years ago or something uh-huh. like that. Again, I think it was a Brandon Suttles pick that he was like, oh, you got to watch this movie. He didn't tell me anything about it. He was just like, oh, it's got Tarantino and you know Robert Rodriguez made it. And mm-hmm. It's got George Clooney and all these other people. I'm like, okay. Yeah, it sounds already like this is going to be great. Yeah, because when the movie kicks off, it's very much this like kidnappy heist crime, uh-huh. you know, crazy brothers are trying to get out of the country kind of story. And you're fully engrossed in this movie for over... It's right at an hour. hour. It's right, right at, an hour. at an hour. And yeah. the movie's like an hour 40, something yeah. like that. So more than halfway through the movie. And then suddenly it's a fucking crazy vampire movie. Like yeah. way over the top. Not, Insane. Not, not subtle vampire movie. No, just suddenly like fucking vampires are here. Yeah, you end yeah. up in the middle of this crazy, you know, kind of grindhouse-y mm-hmm fucking vampire crazy movie. monster vampire movie awesome. and the first time that i watched this it was one of those ones that like i'm sure i i would give my kingdom for my expression just to see the expression <laughs> on my face whenever <laughs> shit started hitting the fan you yeah. know what i mean and this is one of those movies that like i love watching with people who have never seen it before yeah and not telling them anything about it and waiting until it gets to that part and just seeing them be like what the, did i fall asleep what is happening what the fuck just happened yeah is this a different movie yeah because I don't think I've ever seen such a drastic shift in tone mm. of a movie than this. Yeah, it's insane. I, I can't mean, think of anything. I mean, it's just a Tarantino movie up to that point. Yeah, it is. Right, like it's the script is very Tarantino. It's very much the, the directing is very much Robert Rodriguez. It's just going to be a movie that you'd be like, oh, this fits in with Pulp Fiction. In fact, there are. You know, tie-ins. Uh, yeah, which Seth is really cool. Gecko, who uh-huh. was George Clooney, goes to get burgers, comes back with Big Kahuna Burger. The old Big Kahuna. That uh-huh. is a tasty burger. That's what I hear. Um, <laughs> Earl McGraw yeah, is this in is this cool. movie. He also appears in Kill Bill and Planet Terror and Death Proof. Yeah, he's in fucking everything. That's Michael Parks, but, who is awesome. Yeah, he's fucking awesome. Yeah, and he's also in Kill Bill Volume 2 as the the... Uh, pimp who raised Bill. Oh yeah, that's right. He uh-huh. is. He plays two parts in that man. Yeah, he he does that slow blink that oh, just man. is intimidating. He and, does that slow everything. His yeah. his delivery and his speaking and stuff like yeah. that. Like you've seen fucking Red State, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yeah. Oh He's my the, god, the dude. In Red State. Yeah. He is one of the most terrifying people mm-hmm. I've ever seen in a movie. In yeah. that movie, it's fucking awesome. He died earlier this year. R.I.P. Yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. Um, but here's something interesting. Tell me. He plays Earl McGraw in all those movies. Yeah. He gets shot in the head in this movie. He does, which okay. would mean this takes place after Kill Bill? Well, either this takes place after Kill Bill, or this may be the beginning idea in Quentin Tarantino's head for Kill Bill. What if someone got shot in the head and survived? Oh. So... We don't see Earl McGraw necessarily die. Dude, that's sick. We see him get shot in the head, and he gets shot a couple more times, but he might survive. Yeah, I mean, obviously, as as he's in these other movies, it seems like he might, unless this movie is set after those other movies. Which, considering all those movies, they're all, I don't know, they they seem timeless. They don't throw in a whole lot of like technology and stuff like that, so it it could work that way. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Damn, that's a fucking cool idea. That's cool, too, to think that, like, whenever in Kill Bill, the sheriff is standing over her. Uh-huh. He's, like, seeing himself, basically. He's like, like I done ah. got shot in the head once. Yep. yep. <laughs> Straw color <laughs> hair. <laughs> <laughs> that's also, so cool. the that opening scene, which has basically everything you could want out of a Quentin Tarantino scene. Oh, Just, God, like... Yeah. Um, the dialogue is is very Tarantino. Extremely, yeah. Um, <laughs> it has Tarantino in it. It has Tarantino <laughs> in it. Um, the guy behind the counter, who uh, you'll recognize from a million different roles. He's in a lot of stuff. Yeah, but particularly, I would say, he's uh, Kenny Powers' brother-in-law. No or shit. Or brother. He's his brother. Yeah, that's right. Kenny fucking Powers. Yeah. Uh, anyway... He gets caught on fire. He does. He gets and fired then up. Gets off a few shots afterwards. And as that was happening, I said, "Die, Powers," because <laughs> it reminded me of Selma Hayek oh. in uh, Austin Powers. <laughs> oh, after shit. she gets caught on fire, and <laughs> she is at that. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. That is just a, a web of references. Yeah, it's a huge web of references. Holy cow. Yeah. That is a deep... You could, you could laugh at that so many different ways. And then they also... Uh, cool guys don't look at explosions away. Oh, they do. They're yeah, walking just, away. That thing blows up big yeah, time. Yeah, having an argument, basically, it's while awesome. it's exploding behind them. It's really cool. That's it's when cool Tarantino gets like shot through the hand, too, right? And he like looks up, and he literally yeah. looks through his hand. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, Jesus style. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here's a little bit of Earl McGraw's wisdom, though, that I really like. Tell me. He, he says a couple of things. He says, microwave food will kill you faster than a bullet. Yeah, he does. Irony. I agree. Uh-huh. <laughs> Actually... That might indicate that he doesn't die from getting shot. Because he doesn't eat that microwave food. He doesn't eat that microwave food. Uh Damn. Uh, And the other thing he says is burrito is only good for a hippie when he's high on weed. High on the weed. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and also there's a good bit of R word talk. The old retard. I do toss that around quite now, a lot. Now, uh, let's just real quick. I, I don't advocate calling anyone a retard, but the fact that people are afraid to even say the word anymore, yeah. it's, it's not the N-word. No. <laughs> huh? like, it does have another meaning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it does. It yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot of R-word talk in there that's just like, oh no, this is... hi yo. <laughs> don't care for it. When was the first time you watched this movie? 96 probably i, I remember wow. renting it at uh video west buzz r.i.p yeah, yeah. R. <laughs> so R. P. many buzz. r.i.p's this episode yeah i remember renting it at video west and watching it and just being like this is fucking awesome so going into it did you know that it was gonna take a no turn? i i had heard it was a vampire movie and yeah. i was watching it and i was like it must be just like a something that happens at the end or yeah. something like i don't know because it you know again it's an hour of the movie yeah that's just a straight like, like two guys a escaping prison, kidnapping a family, yeah. going down to Mexico movie. And the thing is, is like, you know, I'm just, again, I went into it not knowing anything about it, which totally enhanced my experience. But I'm kind of thinking like, if you knew that there were vampires, you'd just be watching the whole time. Yeah. And I guess even the appearance of the Gecko brothers would kind of make you think, because, you know, they're, they're wearing black suits and white shirts. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like, similar to Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. You, yeah. Well, you know, it's like vampires oh, no. are typically dressed up and stuff all the time. Oh, or you think they looking. are the vampires? Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. Or maybe maybe you meet Harvey Keitel, and he's this, you know, he's this priest, and you might be thinking, oh, mm-hmm. vampire priest, that'd be sick. Yeah. You know, so I'd say if you're waiting for it to happen in some kind of subtle way, whenever the movie does just totally you know go off the rails whenever we meet santanico pandemonium oh my god mm-hmm. dude and it just comes out of nowhere you were probably like that is not where i was expecting this to come from yeah yeah it's out of nowhere and and especially because you were introduced to like so many elements um uh richie yeah who is quentin tarantino is uh, a rapist and murderer he is beyond fucking creepy in this movie yeah he hates women for sure yeah um, we introduced to Seth's, uh, pretty flexible ethics. Like, yeah. He, he's okay with killing somebody, but not just for fun. Yeah, totally. Like, yeah. You don't kill someone for fun. Uh, and we're also introduced to Harvey Keitel, who's going through a crisis of faith. So yeah. we see like these stories all melding together. Yeah. And you think like, oh, like this is, uh, you can see again how this, how this could just be they show up at the bar and then the guy who's supposed to show up doesn't show up and then there's like some other element to it mm-hmm. and no vampires at any moment. No. But vampires show up and really just change the game. <laughs> That's what's so cool about this movie too though, dude, is like it totally would have been okay just to make this a movie about what you're just talking about. Yeah. Guys trying to escape, they uh-huh. kidnap a family to get across the border. Yeah. Maybe somewhere along the lines they, they you know, the the family of the priest learns to side with the criminals in some way. Like, yeah. You could just make this a good movie, just a good normal movie. Yeah. But the fact that they were like, we're making this great flick, but let's be sure to like make it go out of left field, fucking insane <laughs> at the same time. That's one of those things I've always wanted to see in a movie is yeah. like, you know, a movie that's been advertised as like a romantic comedy or, you know, X kind of movie and then you show up, and then just halfway through, it just changes its mind. Yeah. But you have no indication of that from the preview and yeah. stuff. I've always wanted for a movie to do that. So whenever I saw this, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> this is the thing I've always wanted. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I didn't know I wanted it, but here it is. Um, There are some indications that Richie may be a vampire. Oh, yeah? Um, 
He does some sniffing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of times he does it to the uh, bank teller that they've kidnapped. Oh, yeah. That and poor he woman, also dude. does it. Yeah. And, and, well, what we see with that poor woman is that there's blood everywhere and she's dead. We don't get... Yeah. Like, they do just, like, flashes of I what's happening. I love how they there. showed it that way. Yeah, yeah, so we don't know exactly what happened in there. Right. Um, so it could be that he just drank her blood and there's blood everywhere. Yeah. And then, like, also, when later you get Juliette Lewis say, Richie, would you eat my pussy for me? Yeah. Um... Like, it could be like he's a vampire. He's using his charm to make her... Glamouring her and stuff. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, I was just saying, like, maybe that wasn't even his imagination. Yeah, like, yeah. So, yeah. It, you don't even know for sure it's his imagination at first. Yeah. And especially the way she responds later to him when he's talking about it is she just kind of thinks it's humorous. Yeah. Like, maybe she did say it and she's just fucking around. Like, right. So... Um, there, there is some indication that maybe Richie is, is a vampire and then later he ends up becoming a vampire that for he a does. brief period of time. With a large forehead. With a huge forehead. <laughs> yeah. Five head. He, he looks like a Frankenstein vampire. <laughs> like Frankenstein was like, ooh, me no right vampires. <laughs> and then the vampires bit him and he was like, oh, me vampire now. <laughs> now, Vampire Frankenstein, that's a movie I want to fucking see. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> vampire Frankenstein and Dr. Zombie Neurosurgeon. I'm on board. Yeah, I've been writing that one. I don't think that'll ever take off. <laughs> I mean, hell, stranger things have happened, man. <laughs> now, Quentin Tarantino in this also displays one of his favorite film attributes, which is his love of feet. Yep. He's a footsman. He is a footsman. And you know what? I'm not a footsman myself. Nope. And I can see why, because most people I don't think have a foot fetish, and the, the connection of the two seems very disjointed for most people. I don't have a problem with it, though. Can't be that weird. Hey, I don't like the foot because I seen what they done to them Ninja Turtles. Is that right? Mm, the foot. Yeah, the mm -hmm. foot. Yep. I remember because uh, Sam Rockwell was down there and yep. he was like regular menthol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. The foot not good to hang out Raphael with. Raphael was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you know that was an independent movie, by the way? No. The first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Seriously? Yeah. It was an indie movie. It had Holy no shit. backing from any large... Uh, I mean, it ain't as going. good as that Michael Bay one. Well, obviously not. I've never fucking what watched is that. What as good as the Michael Bay movie? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing. Nothing. But yeah, Tarantino, if you watch his flicks, like, there's a lot of foot stuff in Pulp Fiction. There's a lot, a lot of foot, of foot stuff in Kill Bill. Love Zuma Thurman's feet. Yeah, and even in um, Death Proof, Death uh -huh. Proof, there's a lot of lot of the, the female foot, uh -huh. um, which, um, hey, you know, I'm forced to respect a man putting his uh, his fetishes on screen. Yeah, that's what he likes. That's what he puts out there. As yeah. long as it's, as long as it's consenting foot. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah, and uh, he there are a few scenes here, like particularly when uh, Seth leaves to go get food. He yeah. has the bank teller come in and sit on the bed with him, and he's like, "Take your shoes off." Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he specifically does say that. Uh, then later, he's staring at Juliet Lewis's feet. Yep, and also. In the in the 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 pirate strip club, uh, uh, etc. <laughs> Santanico Pandemonium pours tequila down her foot into his mouth. Yes, and I I only imagine him having just the the most intense rager of all time. How while could he not? That. Like my I God. mean, it, like because first off, Selma Hayek, gorgeous. Oh my God! I'm assuming. That's something he's always wanted, is a woman to pour tequila down her foot into his mouth. I can't imagine he's ever thought, you know what I would hate for that to happen? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I also assume, like, he must have written this role for himself and maybe oh, dude, even kind you of know. insisted on playing the role. Because then later, uh, you know, she has him on the ground and she says, I'm going to make you my slave, etc. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, all yeah. of that is very sexual. Oh, yeah, extremely it so. It seems like that must be what he wanted. Every time I watch movies where, like, the guy that wrote the movie is in it and he hooks up with just some, like, scorching uh -huh. chick. <laughs> yeah. Like, fucking, uh, uh, like, uh, which one was it? It's one of those Zach Braff movies. Garden State? Garden State, yeah, yeah, he hooks up with like Natalie Portman or something, yeah. right? Well, it's yeah. like you son of a bitch. It's like you're just writing these parts, <laughs> yes. sons of bitches. So yeah, so he definitely does have himself a lot of a lot of foot fun. But what follows after his foot fun in this is uh is no good because that's where what is it happens that that blood is exposed? Ah, uh, 
Well, he already has the wound in his hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, of course, what, what we have here is that Seth, um, when they come in, uh, we got Cheech Marin talking about all the different types of pussy they have. Yes. Um, which Many is types. Good, it's good to hear. It's like... Diversity. The, it's like... <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to go to a brothel and find out, hey... They don't have uh, the exact type of pussy I want. They only have one kind. What are they, racist? And hey, if you're DMX, head on down there. They got cold pussy. <laughs> you can get all the blood on the dick. Do they got corpse want. pussy? They got corpse pussy, apparently. <laughs> uh, DMX is welcome. They also got they also got dog pussy. So, <laughs> all right. But anyway, that's for it. Um, maybe maybe they also some of the clients are other dogs. You know what? Like, if do you think of a dog? showed up at a place where you could fuck a dog and yeah. the dog had money would they be like dogs aren't served here get on out of here boy go on get go on get bad boy <laughs> bad dog who's a bad boy you are <laughs> i wonder what the legalities are of ra- of opening a brothel for dogs I, listen <laughs> I'm down. Let's do this. Let's turn this off and go start getting our business license. Last episode ever. Goodbye. Uh huh. Well, so Seth, as they're walking in, uh, Cheech Marin, who plays three roles in this, he's movie. in here thrice, and I can't help but wonder why. Yeah, he um, he tries to stop them, basically trying to tell them this is a biker and, yeah. and trucker bar. He's the border guard too. He's the border guard. Yeah. Who uh, creepily looks at Juliet Lewis on the toilet? Very much so. Yeah, um, he tries to stop him from going in. Now, mm-hmm. once they get in and they go up to the bar and order from Danny Trejo, who, by the way, um, when they walk up to Danny Trejo, yeah, uh, and you see him and he looks so young. He does. For Danny Trejo. Yeah, he's forty something. <laughs> What? Yeah. I was hoping you were going to say, he's only 18. And he's like, 18 Damn, he like, Shit. years old. No, he's 40-something <laughs> years old. Holy shit. It's insane. And he only got bigger. Like, he's like so skinny in this dude, in comparison to Danny Trejo now. If you guys don't know, like, me and Steve are like the whitest dudes yeah. ever in the world. Mm-hmm. I, I covet melanin. I covet it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, the fact of the matter is, is like, I'm fucking 33 I have lived indoors like 80%, oh, yeah. 90% Playing of my life. Playing video games on the yeah, computer. Exactly. Guitar, mm-hmm. everything. I don't go outside. I never really have. What's Had it for? Fucking pre cancer on my face like a year ago. Oh, yeah. God damn it. And yeah, it's like. That's how white you are. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. And it's like, if I could just have a little melanin. It's insane. Yeah. Our the whitest. We are the whitest kids you know. Dude, huh? maybe, what about that show? Maybe like Remember? next week, we're going to find like a news alert that like melanin transplants now available. Oh, man. Finally, we can become Rachel Dolezal. Just a- that lady who <laughs> said she was transracial. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to like be able to, you know age past like 35 and not look like the fucking crypt keeper i've already aged past 35 do i look like the crypt keeper no so far, good. <laughs> maybe sound like him oh okay <laughs> i yeah you could lose the robe i guess i don't see why i would it's comfy should i should i lose also lose all these great death puns i use all the time no you gotta you gotta keep all those. right uh, so <laughs> um they go in and, and basically their rejected service and this is Jacob Harvey Keitel's character yeah. has some of the best lines throughout. Oh fuck I think. yeah, he does. Um, and he he has this line where he's basically like, "I have a Class C commercial oh, yeah. driver's license for that RV out there." Yeah. So I'm a trucker, am I not? Yeah. And then these are my friends. Like it's it's uh, it really cool. And Danny Trey was like, "Okay, you yeah. are you're a trucker," but then Seth is you know, he uh, he kicked. Cheech while he was down outside. He did. And he and, stabs a guy, doesn't he? Uh, no, he doesn't stab anybody yet. Okay. It's when Cheech comes in. Ah. And he's like, that's the fucker who kicked me while I was down. And they come up, and uh, that's when Danny Trejo comes over and stabs him in the hand. Now, this ah, is when the blood right. comes out, and this is when you see Selma Hayek's, Selma like, Hayek's face. Ay, like, ay, ay. I am a fan of blood. She, she says, says, ay caramba. I'm Coco for cuckoo blood. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so yeah that's that's when that all kicks off yeah like all the the blood fever 
But before that, we're introduced also to Sex Machine. Yeah, dude. Who's sitting there with his uh, with his dick gun. Yep. And we're also introduced to Frost. Who is awesome. Who is awesome. And guess what? Played in the first Super Bowl for the Chiefs. No way. He did. He, he's uh, one of those guys. He's in a lot of stuff. He's in a ton of stuff. I wish yeah. I could think of what his name is. It's driving um, me crazy. I could, t- I could tell you if, if it's if it's still written down. Fred Williamson. Fred Williamson. He's one of those yeah. cats that I think was in a lot of other movies that I've seen. And I always recognize him. And I never know what from. It's probably from this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Fred Williamson, he he looks kind of like Jim Brown and kind of took the yeah. Jim Brown route of going from football into acting mm. yeah. and did that by going into black exploitation films. So right, um, a lot of the people that you see in Quentin Tarantino movies are from black exploitation films or oh, Nazi yeah. exploitation films because he loves that called. shit. Yeah, because he loves those like just the the campiness of them, etc. Oh, yeah. So we get him. And he gives us later the back in Nam speech. Oh, I love it, dude. Yeah. I love it. The only problem I have with that speech is he talks about how a grenade went off nearby. Yeah. And that's why I'm so pretty. But then you look at his face. It looks fine. Yeah, There's nothing wrong with his face. No, uh, not at all. <laughs> I imagine they thought of getting someone with like scars or stuff all over yeah. the face. J- but he, Danny Trejo was already working. Yeah, movie, he was already so. working behind the bar. So they were like, well... We'll get somebody else, I guess. <laughs> Cheech can play three people, but mm-hmm. not Danny. We Trejo. could get Edward James almost, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that would play out. <laughs> it could have gotten the role to be played by uh, fucking Iggy Pop's chest. Ugh. <laughs> Put on a shirt, you the, seventy-year-old man. The most barren and desolate terrain on all the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Iggy Pop's chest. Um, I, I think my favorite character in this is is Jacob. For yeah. sure. Harvey oh, Keitel's split character. One of the things we get that sets up like his what's going on with him yeah. is um his his daughter, who is played by Juliette Lewis, yeah. asks him if he believes in God anymore. Right. And he says, Yes, I do believe in Jesus, I do believe in God, but do I love them? No. Right. He's That's, had a he's had a he's had a rough time his with G O D. I'll tell you this. If I did believe in God and my wife died, I'd have trouble believing in God. I would think he's a not nice person. Yeah, what a dick. Dick move God. Dick yeah, move. Seriously. But yeah, so we also get uh what I think maybe was Quentin Tarantino carrying over something from his natural born killers yeah. um script. They see on the news a woman talking about the Gecko Brothers, and there's oh, like yeah. a death toll on the screen. Yeah. It's like comically a death toll, like a yeah. number of people killed. If you're keeping track of it. And also, Nancy Topps' dad. Yeah, that's right. That yeah. is right. The dad from Nightmare on Elm Street is the cop who is after them. Uh-huh. I noticed that. Uh, John something. John I Saxon. Can't... John Saxon. Yes, mm-hmm. I saw him, and I was like, God damn, it's Nancy's dad. Yeah. It made me real happy. Yeah, there are a lot of, like... I guess, like, maybe indications early that this is going to become a horror movie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it still is such a surprise. Even though you know it's a vampire movie. Yeah. Such a surprise at an hour into the movie that, boom, vampires. And when they start changing the special effects and stuff for the vampires are fucking crazy. Now, a little bit of the transformations and stuff are that, you know, early mid nineties, or I should say mid to late nineties, early yeah, like CGI. Black, black and white, like from the black and white video or the, the exactly molding the morphing. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it the, actually does look like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the, the person who plays, uh, Santanico pandemonium as a vampire is a different person than Selma Hayek. So oh. I guess it really would have been that. I hadn't thought about that. So some of the transformations, those morphs and stuff, they, they do look, very much of the time but yeah after that so many of the creatures themselves look so fucking rad they're not at all like interview with a vampire no. suave debonair sexy no. vampires they're and more like nasty they're all different looking yeah too. i i had this question about them because santanico pandemonium yeah. looks like a snake vampire right she does yeah um, when she when she starts her dance she has a snake yes yeah, she does um, there is a, one of the vampires who looks like uh, a wolf mother. Yeah, I know, right? But only one. Uh huh. There, there are another couple of vampires that I would call pussy face vampires. They are. They have that pussy face. It looks like they just have a pussy right in the middle of their face. They do. Um, later, when all the bats show up and turn into vampires, they all look different than any vampire we've seen up to that totally. point. Totally. Yeah. 
Uh, Quentin Tarantino is a Frankenstein Frank and, vampire. Frankenstein vamp, yeah. And then um, uh, Tom Savini has like a comical transition yeah. into vampire, where he's like, you just have to see it, really. Like it, it's a lot of like facial expressions and really good physical comedy. Oh, he's great, man. Um, and same with Cheech too. He's like, I yeah. suck. Yes, <laughs> he says I suck. But and, and then it's like you said, there's also the big weird like rat demon. Yeah, when Tom Savini gets his head cut off, yeah. he turns into this huge rat demon thing. Yeah, which it must have been, dude. It must have been so much fun to be on production, and be like, what Absolutely. all could we make these things? Are are there limitations? Do they have to look humanoid? Yeah. No. Okay. Well, let's just have fun. Yeah, and I would say if you have K and B, if you have uh, you know Greg Nicotero and yeah. uh, Robert Kurtzman and stuff working, he's just like go crazy, do whatever you want. Did they also open KB Toys? <laughs> they did. they opened K and B Toys. Yep. That's what I thought. Uh huh. It's great. <laughs> you go there. You can get uh, you can get a a, a vampire that looks like a snake. Sock or, and bopper. You know some GI Joe toys. Yeah. <laughs> but it must have been so cool to work on the production for these because I can't really say that these vampires really look like any other vampires no. in any horror flick that I've seen anyway. No. Yeah. The I mean, they're all over the place, and even Quentin Tarantino as a vampire, whenever. It shows Seth looking at him. He yeah. still looks like Quentin Tarantino. Oh, totally. But with vampire teeth. Same he doesn't look like the Frankenstein vampire. So, like, he's he's glamoring him. He's making him see something Oh, different. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. And that's cool, too, because this movie does, even though the vampires are so freaky and strange, it does play into a lot of the vampire rules and stuff. Sunlight yeah. kills them. What? Holy water kills them. Crosses kill them, which I, I love whenever a dude has, like, then he have the shotgun and he, he has puts a shotgun like a and a baseball through. bat. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, now it's a cross. Now it's a cross. Yeah, and they, they make. Uh, and Harvey Keitel, being a priest, he blesses all the holy water or yeah. just all the water. So now it it's turns holy into water, holy water. Yeah. Which they put in like fucking super soakers uh -huh. and, and condoms. And, and they everything. have a, a jackhammer steak. Yeah, what the fuck? You it's know that so was a cool. Savini idea or something. Absolutely, it's so cool. Yeah. Um. So yeah, they, the the way that these vampires. Uh, are dealt with is is the same as any yeah. other vampire stuff you've seen before. The only difference I would say is that there's never any question that they're vampires. George Clooney has the the quick. These are vampires. Yeah. I don't believe in vampires, <laughs> but these are vampires. Do we agree? And everybody's like, "I yes, I agree. Yeah. I don't believe in vampires, but these are fucking vampires. Yeah, I can't explain it any other way." Yep. So like. There, there's not that long, uh, which we'll see in vampires the movie we cover next, Fright yes. Night, yes, where yes, you yes. have to keep convincing people that vampires exist. Right. Everybody's yeah. kind of on board with this. They're yeah, like, well, everybody's just like, it's fucking vampires. Those are fucking vampires. Yep. <laughs> so I really like that. I like that it, I it just goes, it goes, you get introduced to the vampires and seconds later get introduced to vampire killing. Yeah. Because um, Frost... He picks up four different vampires and uh, stakes them on the legs of a table. Dude, like it, they had so much fun with all those oh, kills yeah. and stuff. So cool. Yeah. Doesn't one of them like? Doesn't he also like punch one of their hearts out or something? Yes. Uh, Frost. He grab. It's Cheech's heart. I th oh wait, no. It's the big, the big like bouncer guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like yeah. grabs his heart and his heart's still beating. Yeah. It's black and then, or something. But he keeps moving. He keeps coming at him. Yeah. And then Tom Savini comes over and stabs it with a pencil. Yeah. And he dies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. They must have had so much fun. And like they melt, they explode. It's very gooey. There's lots of goo. There's a ton of goo. Yeah. A lot of exploding vampires, too. And yeah. uh, whenever... What we get at the end is the old sunlight kills them, make yeah. enough holes for the sunlight to come in. Yeah, and which is cool. And they just start fucking exploding. Yeah. And that scene, too, where, like, you know, Harvey Keitel turns into a vampire, and he's, like, having to ask his kids to kill him and stuff. Uh-huh. That's really... I mean, that's fucked up. That's one of those moments where it's like... Yeah. I know at this point the movie has gone completely off the rails yeah. but it's like earlier in the movie those relationships you saw between Harvey Keitel and his kids they still hold water you still remember that you still remember this guy loves his kids and stuff yeah. so that scene is like pretty rough man it really is and then <laughs> I I do you can tell he loves his kids but one of the things that really like cements it is when they're they first come up into the hotel room to like you know take their RV and kidnap them yeah and uh, one of his kids is Asian. Yeah. 
And George Clooney says, you don't look Japanese. And he says, neither does he. He looks Chinese. God, dude, his delivery on that part uh-huh. is so fucking good. It's <laughs> so good. It's so good, man. But There's yeah, so he, many lines in there that he delivers that way, too. That yeah. are just Like, man, that part where he's like, I'm one bad mm, mm, servant of God, yeah. whatever he says. <laughs> he's so good. But it doesn't. It would be so easy to make that seem so lame. Oh, yeah. It would be so easy, but he does it in a way that's like, uh-huh. I know people who would say it that way. Yeah. Who would not say bad words, but still say it with conviction. Yeah. He's and amazing, dude. He really is. And he, he pulls off, he's not intimidated. No. Huh? Like at no point is he intimidated by these guys. He knows that they could yep. kill his kids and he doesn't want his kids to get killed. Well, that's I kind of see it as just like at this point, you know, with his wife gone and his, his faith in God fuck. gone, he just doesn't fucking care. It's like, yeah. he'll do what he can, but it's like, ultimately... It's like, oh, we just got held up by these guys who are known killers, and they're yeah. gonna force us across the border. But I seriously just don't give a fuck. Fuck life. Yeah, fuck life. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly his attitude throughout. Yeah. Fuck life. Yeah, and I like, I like too that they put that in the movie because it, it would have been really easy for him just to be just generic RV dad. Oh, absolutely. But they really gave that character some some depth, which again could have gone badly you could have just been like why do they spend so much time developing this guy in this ridiculous fucking movie yeah with fucking cheech talking about pussy and uh-huh. stuff but it actually works yeah i mean he's he is the most developed character so i mean in a lot of ways is the story of him it's yeah. about his crisis of faith and how he uh, gets past it to take care of his kids and make sure that they're safe yeah unfortunately his son scott gets killed because he hesitates on killing his dad that he does yeah that he does he also mm. is not really playing guitar in the fucking movie steve <laughs> i was gonna ask you he's, about he, dude that. he's fake news and the shit out of that i was gonna ask you about that because when i saw him playing guitar i was like i don't think he's playing that guitar no he's not and that's something that like rodriguez puts in pretty much all of his movies there's, there's always somebody playing guitar yeah. and he actually does a lot of the guitar playing like in Desperado and uh-huh. in this, anytime there's, you know, obviously ADR of somebody playing guitar, it's actually Rodriguez playing. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he plays and stuff too. That's awesome. Which is, yeah, which is cool. And I'm willing to give the kid a free pass because he's wearing an Assault on Precinct 13 shirt. He really is. That's <laughs> awesome. That is, that is what, like, that was uh, Kurtzman's original sort of inspiration was Assault on Precinct 13 with vampires. Oh, shit, really? Yeah. So, like, um,. If you haven't seen Assault on Precinct 13, which you should, uh, it's a John Carpenter movie mm-hmm. that basically is just, uh, it, there's a dystopia out there that they don't ever fully explain, but yeah. there are tons of criminals and they're trying to get into a police station to get their fellow criminal out. Yeah. And it's fucking awesome. Yeah, dude. Uh, and so that that's kind of how this works is where, uh, you know, they bar the doors and everything. They're trying to keep the vampires out. Just like in Assault on Precinct 13, they're trying yeah. to keep the the bad guys out. Also, kid in the movie, smoking bowl. He has a smoking bowl. Smoking bowl. Of all the bowls I've ever seen, that motherfucker is smoking. Oh, dude, he's fucking smoking that bowl. Jim Carrey style. <laughs> what do you think about the ending of this movie? The ending of this is, is actually kind of kind of bleak if you get down it's to it. It's real bleak and pretty perfect. Um uh, Juliette Lewis, uh, her, like the way she responds to everything at the end is perfect. Like, I know. Whenever uh, Cheech shows up, I don't remember his third character name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever he shows up at the end to meet Seth, and Seth punches him and tells him, you know, it's a fucking vampire bar, etc. cetera. Uh, and then he, he says, uh, Kate, go get the, the briefcase or whatever. Yeah. The way she throws that gun down. Oh yeah, it's just like perfect. Like I, I don't even fucking care yeah. anymore. What the fuck? Whatever. Now? Yeah. And then like you know when she's like, "Can I go with you?" Because it's just like, what the hell else am I gonna do with my life? Yeah, I just I just first Mexico. found out that vampires exist. Yeah. <laughs> and second, lost my fa- entire fucking family. Yeah, they killed my entire family. Yeah. And now so literally, the only person I know here is you, and you're a maniac who kidnapped me. Yeah. So what am I gonna do? Can I come with you? And then he says. Uh, I may be a bastard, but I'm not a fucking bastard. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty good line. Fucking cold, man. Yeah, but yeah, the the ending is real bleak. 
Yeah. And then, I mean, he he basically... He just drives off, leaves her. Yeah. And he also is like, you know, uh, my brother died in there. I want a better percentage. <laughs> like, yeah. That's it. Like, and I understand. Because obviously his brother had become a burden. His brother yeah. uh, is going to keep take killing of, and yeah. raping women. And he disagrees with that. He doesn't want to have to deal with that. So Too much of a wild card. Yeah, so his brother getting killed by vampires is one of those things where it's like, I can wash my hands of this. It's not my fault. Yeah. I did my best. Maybe I can get a better percentage. Instead of 30, I get 20%. 25, and, sorry. And then as they as the movie is ending, the camera pans out, and you see that the bar, the building that the bar was built on top of is actually the top of like a big you know, Aztec or Mayan pyramid, yeah. like a step That's pyramid. That's a fucking awesome mythology that I'd like yeah. to know more about. And I, I know in the TV series they go more into it. I haven't seen it, though. I haven't either, no. Uh, the TV series is on El Rey. Oh. So the the bar itself was in El Rey. Okay. Yeah. Uh, El Rey was started by Robert Rodriguez. I guess he has some connection with El Rey. Huh. The king. Oh. Yeah. I do like that, though. That was just a cool twist where it pans out and you're like, ah, oh, sick. It was on top of this fucking... Pyramid. Yeah. It's neat. I had one major question. Hit me. Because I, I, I think uh, throughout No Vampire, I'm trying to understand vampires. Okay. Yeah. What do you want to know? Here's the thing. When vampires explode yeah. in this, or when they get staked and then burn up, yeah. their limbs are often left behind. Yeah, a lot of times there are extremities left over. In the real world, we've seen instances similar to that in cases that are often referred to as spontaneous human combustion. Ah, the combustion, yeah. Is it possible that people who are said to have spontaneously combusted were actually vampires? They were actually just vampires. Yeah. Oh, man. Is that what's going on in Malawi? Oh. <laughs> it might be. I'd, I'd like to look more into this. Oh, it's a tragedy, but we gotta laugh. Listeners, please send in your favorite spontaneous human combustion stories to if, Dead and Lovely Pod. I would prefer if it's a story about yourself. Oh, yeah. I combusted yeah. once. It mm -hmm. wasn't so bad. I had a touch of SIDS as a child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we knew somebody who fucking said yep, that. Yep, we did. <laughs> You know I you had didn't. SIDS. You had a touch of sudden infant death syndrome. Oh yeah, I died a little bit when I was well, a kid. I died a little bit and it I came died, right back. I died inside by hanging out with you, asshole. <laughs> God, <laughs> I fucking forgot about that fucking yeah. tool. My God, that's fucking funny. So man. overall, this is a fucking awesome movie. It is. It is. And and again, um, you cannot beat. The first time you watch this movie. So if you're telling anybody about this movie, if you've seen this movie, which hopefully for listeners you have seen this movie and we didn't just spoil it for you, but if you have if you've seen this movie and you're about to share it with somebody else, if they know nothing about it, keep them in the dark. Yeah. But, because watching this movie with somebody, we watched it with my my in laws um, at the beach a couple of years ago. We took a bunch of movies with us to watch during the nighttime and stuff. They didn't know anything about this movie, and we sat and watched it with them. Didn't tell them anything about it. Uh -huh. We're just like, oh, you know, it's kind of a Tarantino movie and yada yada. Uh -huh. And sure enough, right there at one hour, they were both just like, what is happening? <laughs> what are we watching? <laughs> like, you can only have that joy once. You can only have that sense of surprise once. So if you're sharing this with somebody, don't spoil it. Don't tell them anything about it. Just mm -hmm. turn it on. Tell them it's good. Tell them who's in it. Turn the movie on and let it, let it play. Let it rock. Yeah. Um... I have, okay, I have one big question, because just considering the fact that this is made by Miramax, and we yeah. have to think about the mistreatment of women in general. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a strip club slash uh, brothel. Yeah. I have this issue. Strip clubs exist. Sure. Um, I don't like going to them. Uh-huh. Uh, I've never been a fan, though... If you ever get a chance and you're in Hollywood, go to Jumbo's Clown Room. Jumbo's Clown Jumbo's Room. Jumbo's Clown Room. It is. It's not a strip club technically. It would be. A, what do you call <laughs> that? Um, like Chicago, a burlesque. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah. It's a yeah. burlesque club. They don't take off all their clothes. You don't see any any full booby or anything uh -huh. like that. And uh, all the ladies there, tattooed up and and real fun. Tattooed up. Yeah. Um, I don't like strip clubs, but strip clubs exist. When you show a strip club in a movie, is yeah. it automatically sexist? Is it automatically <laughs> negative for women? 
that's one of those things that might even just kind of depend on on who's watching it. That's true. Because you might watch it and be like, they're helping kids go to college. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it kind of does depend. And I don't know, though. I guess you could also say that the camera work involved and stuff like yeah. that can make it more forcibly erotic to the viewer. What I would say definitely about this is that they don't emphasize shots on the boobs. They're not, not too much. They're, There's they're, some. Yeah. yeah, there are because it's a strip club. You're yeah. going to see boobs. But yeah. the, it, the emphasis is on how rough the place is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think I think in a way that ends up playing out well. I, I mean, we are two dudes talking about it, so yeah. our opinion on the matter is not really important. <laughs> but it is a question I have. That no. Just like, how how can you watch... Say, like, you're watching uh, Godfather. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, Talia Shear's character, when she's getting beaten by her husband... Yeah. Like, those scenes are fucking brutal. Oh, they're rough, yeah. It's not encouraging spousal abuse. No, uh, no. I mean, it's showing it in its full light. Sure. But at the same time, it's got to be real rough for any woman watching it who's gone yeah. through that. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. I mean, what I think about strip clubs, uh, in a, from a practical standpoint, uh, I've done worse shit for less than sure. take off my clothes in front of a bunch yeah. of pervy dudes. Totally so. But I'm also not a woman, so again, my opinion doesn't matter much on the situation. Well, let me ask you a question that is a it is a completely quantifiable question okay. about strip clubs. Uh-huh. How many, how many kids of single mothers, uh-huh. college educations, yeah, do you think have been paid for by yeah Motley Crue songs? Uh, yeah, or Power Man 5000. <laughs> the first time I ever went to a strip club. Power Man 5000. Uh-huh. Yeah, first time what? I ever went to a strip club. Um, actually, it was the only time I've gone to a strip club uh-huh. other than Jumbo's Clown Room. Was there was there a Tonight the Stars Revolt happening? No, the, what is the, huh, no, 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 the real popular one. I, oh, uh, fucking... when, when Worlds Collide. Oh, When Worlds Collide. Yeah, there we go. There was yeah, a girl yeah. who danced to that. And I'm a big fan of uh, tattoos on the ladies. And of uh, Power Man 5000. And Power Man 5000. That first record's so, still fun. I'm not going to yeah, lie. Yeah, no, it is. And so I was like, well, this is fun. But then the next lady who came on seemed real sad oh. and <laughs> i realized oh this is not fun for everybody <laughs> no it just really no. deflated the whole situation yeah. for you but i i've also had i've been friends with uh strippers in the past and yeah they, like they've paid off their car payments paid for their kids education etc like oh yeah i mean it, it, work working in capitalism is always fucking bad like if you serve tables yeah. you get paid two dollars and 13 cents an hour yeah and anybody who comes in off the street is your boss for an hour absolutely so and that's they dictate fucking your pay demeaning. that's fucked up yeah they dictate how much money you get and maybe they'll give you a penny if they want they to. can decide actually you're or just making nothing. 213 an hour today Fuck or you. they'll just walk away yeah. and not even pay for their goddamn food that happens all the time happens too. all the time so I don't know. Like, uh, it, it may be demeaning, but uh, to talk about whether or not stripping is demeaning is to just talk about whether working is demeaning. Yeah, it no is. kidding. No it kidding. Is. But I just wonder, you know, songs like Girls, 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 obviously, a Dr. Uh-huh. Feel Good. Yeah. All of the. I mean, dude, well, you know, I'm playing that 80s hair metal cover band, Skate yeah. Banger now. Uh huh. During practice, it's all I can do to keep my clothes on when we play. Well, them it's got to be real hard. That girls, we, oh girls, man, girls. we start hitting the same old situation. Uh huh. I at least kick my flip flops off. <laughs> you wear flip flops <laughs> a lot when playing music. All the time, yep. son. That's what I do. Mm-hmm. So I just I can't help but wonder how many bright futures Motley Crue has paid for us with those strip club anthems. <laughs> <laughs> I also have to think about the people that don't, like we we all want to believe that everyone has a bright future. Yeah. But that's just a lie we tell ourselves. A lot of people don't have a bright future, and if they did, they would squander it anyway because oh God, yeah. they love meth. Yeah. Oh, my God. Absolutely. God, they so. love Holy meth. shit. People love that meth. And taking off your clothes for meth money is Easy. probably probably the least degrading thing someone would do for meth. <laughs> That's also very true. Yeah. But then you got that seesaw act of maintaining your good looks that people want oh to see you God, naked yeah. while still doing meth. Well, it's real dark in a strip club. That's also true, too. <laughs> yeah, as long as you look good under a black light or something, you're okay. I've also been to a strip establishment and it was fine. I mean, I like I like ladies and stuff, so yeah, there, there's fan. that. But to me, honestly, the most fun thing was just like watching how fucking stupid men are oh they're idiotic dude it's like these girls 
I, I don't know. It's one of those situations, and I've heard I've heard you know female strippers and stuff talk about uh, how empowering it is yeah. to be a stripper, and I completely understand that because if you're a woman, all that you have to do, all that you have to do to make a man just you know bend over backwards and give you all his money, is show him something that he likes to see. Yeah, it's insane. I, I and I've talked to my wife about it many times. Uh-huh. I feel like. Men are so less evolved than women. Women oh, are yeah. immu- women are We're immune idiotic. to sexual charms, but mm. it's like the male mind still runs off a of fucking lizard, caveman, fucking mm. brain. Where we're like, oh, that's a good reproductive host. I think she must like me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because seriously, it's like my sperm will find purchase there. <laughs> yeah, her womb is a place where my seed can find purchase. <laughs> but you know, it's like it must be. I imagine, I imagine it, at times it can be, I'm sure, extremely degrading, but at other times it certainly must be empowering to be like, yeah. just to see this sucker sitting across the bar and be like, I know exactly how to make him give me my money. Yeah. Once give at, me his money, I'm sorry. The, the, the best stripper story I have is yeah. once at Jumbo's Clown Room, my wife and I were there. Yeah. And I, again, I, I am not one who that if you show me boobies i'll throw my money at you yeah. but i do know that if you're at a strip club you're supposed to give money to the strippers sure. so it is uh my wife said it's like watching a little boy who's very embarrassed i just walk <laughs> up walk up to the stage drop a dollar and walk back <laughs> like, anyway my wife went up because um there was a, a young lady who absolutely gorgeous yeah. and, and very uh gothy which oh yeah i'm very on board. attractive very uh-huh. important uh, my wife went up and gave her five bucks and said, you deserve this. And she said, I deserve the world. Oh, shit. And it was the greatest thing I've ever seen. It was Damn. awesome. Damn. Yeah. yeah. I, that, would, that would be getting an extra fiver yeah. from Eller. Yeah. Like, Super cool. You do, young lady. You do deserve the world. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> I can show you the world. Shining, shimmery, splendor. <laughs> Something other Disney <laughs> stuff <laughs> secret <laughs> hidden messages penis <laughs> so ben what do you think about this movie i fucking love this movie it? i love this movie uh, again the first time that i watched it it completely blew my mind mm-hmm. but it's not one of those movies where like let's say let's say something like the sixth sense or maybe even you could say friday 13th where it's like once you know the twist it's not really that fun to watch it again mm-hmm. or like we were talking about saw it's like uh-huh. cool trick you can only do it once though um, this is not one of those movies nope. where it's like, even when you know it's coming, the whole ride is so enjoyable and so fun that you can watch this and over and over again, it's and it still time. retains its freshness. Um, George Clooney in the movie is awesome. It's fun seeing him be a shitty person. Cause yeah, he's, he's not a good guy at all. No, yeah. he's usually like Mr. Mm. fucking All-American, mm. charming, good guy. Um, but in this, he is a truly scummy, awful person, and mm. you almost kind of feel bad about thinking that he's cool in the yeah. movie. Tarantino is creepy as fuck in this. Keitel, like I said, is amazing. I think that Juliet Lewis is fucking awesome, too. The sun in the movie is a little bit thin, but that doesn't really matter. No. I mean, not everybody in a movie can be gigantic, so it's yeah. fine. Uh, the production and stuff is killer. Special effects are sick. It's just a great It's just a great movie. Soundtrack is good, too. So I would say, overall, I'll put this in about a... I'm going I'm to call it a seven and a half. A seven and a half. And a half. <laughs> um... I love this movie. I like uh, the opening. It's yeah. it's a Tarantino movie opening, and then it's an awesome vampire movie in the end. So yeah, it's great. It uh, it's a little dated. I mean, you don't see. I, I think though, uh, to be fair, this movie um, is taking that '90s over the top action movie aesthetic. Yeah, and really just like satirizing it in some ways right yeah 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 but watching it now you just think like if you were to see it for the first time you might think like oh it's just like any of those other 90s movies where yeah. everything's over the top but i think they were trying to do some sort of parody of mm. over the top um so it, it still holds up it's still really good i uh, yeah george clooney is awesome in it he's he's super like He's charming because he's George Clooney, but his character doesn't do anything particularly charming. No, uh uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah, that goes to show you just how fucking charming that dude is. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, and again, it goes back to that, kind of like what I was talking about a second ago, about us still working on caveman brain. You can't help but like pretty people. That's true. Yeah. You can't help (laughs) it. You can't, because you see him and you're just like, that's a good looking dude. Whatever he says, goes. Yeah. (laughs) Let him be king. Uh Uh-huh. 
Yes, you are our king now. <laughs> Tell us what to do. King Clooney. King Clooney. I'd love to see a King Kong movie, but it's just king Clooney. A, a big George Clooney. It would be so much different because they would show <laughs> up and find him on the island. And instead of putting him in chains, they would be like, do you want a boat? Maybe yeah, we took a boat here. You can have it. We have some Oscars. You uh-huh. can have. Here are Oscars. <laughs> Let's introduce you to this blonde lady. Yeah. You don't even have to climb up to the top of the building. Take the elevator. She wants to meet you. She does. <laughs> King Clooney. We want to put you on stage, but not in chains. Peter Jackson's going to direct a movie about you. <laughs> deals, deals off. Deal breaker. Get her the fuck out of here. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I love this. It's really good. I think seven and a half is fair. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and agree. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. So it's let's a really add fun that film. up. That is 15 divided by two. That's a seven and a half average. That's seven and a half average on this thing. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that go. Now, Steve, next week, we are going to be covering another flick for the month of No Vampire that you, our loyal listeners, chose in our, uh-huh. our Facebook poll that old Steve Arino put up here. We're going to be watching a Fright Night. Low down, click will cause you mad fright night. <laughs> oh, is that how that goes? It's, uh, no, that's, uh, that was a song that was on the kids' soundtrack. Oh. Don't know if you ever saw it. Holy kids. shit. That's a fun loving movie. Kids? Yeah. Oh, so it's yeah. It's not. It's not. No. It's not. No, a lot of AIDS and rape and <laughs> it, not a good guy stuff. getting hit in the face by a skateboard. It does happen. It does it's happen. Not, yeah. Don't, uh, don't, you know what, kids? Not for you. Not for you. But Fright Night, probably so. Yeah. We're going to find out if it's for us. Dun, dun, dun. Next week on the show. Stay tuned. The Brado. The Brado. <laughs> Look at the stuff we can do when we're in the same room yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit different. It's, it's so, so much, much better. It's, now, what we've not told you is that Steve and I are actually, uh, we, you know, because we have no idea what to do when we're sitting yeah. face to face trying to record. We're actually sitting back to back uh-huh. in in chairs. That's true. Holding hands with the hand that's not holding the microphone. Well, yeah, we want to feel safe. Yeah, exactly. But at uh-huh. the same time, we don't want to look at each other. No. Because that makes it weird. Yeah, it's totally weird. Two guys looking at each other? Uh, what? Gay. Hey, we'll talk about some of that next week. Yeah, no doubt. And also, this will be another live episode. It's almost Steve's here in town. Live so and ugly. Should be a good old time. So be sure to tune in next week for our coverage of Fright Night. Now, Steve, where can they reach us on the worldwide internets? Uh, you can always email us, uh, deadandlovelypod at gmail.com. Mm. You can also find us on Instagram, Twitter, Etc. on at dead lovely pod mm. and we have a facebook group that's pretty awesome we do we shout do out indeed. to brandon wood one of our best listeners brandon be killing that facebook game oh my god that brandon wood brandon be stalking my wife in in food city a lot of times does he yep because she does <laughs> not remember who he is <laughs> he sent me a photo one time of, uh-huh. of him standing behind her at food city being like uh-huh. i don't think your wife knows who i am <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great it's pretty That's fantastic hilarious. so Brandon you are the man yep so uh, you guys can find me on uh, where can you find me Instagram and Twitter at Ben Ellery Guitars also be sure to please rate and review this podcast it really makes a huge difference for helping us show up in searches and on charts and stuff I'm already extremely pleased our show has been around for less than a year it's yeah. already got like 20 I think 25 like 5 star reviews yeah which a lot of the other shows that I like to listen to, like uh, The Bitter End is a great horror podcast I like to listen uh-huh. to, they've been around much longer than us, don't have near that many reviews and stuff, so thank you guys Can't so much. Can't mess with the champ. Can't mess with the champ. I mean, I ain't going to apologize for being the no. fucking champs. Sorry. Yeah, you can't help it. Sorry, I ain't going to apologize. <laughs> I think you might have... You said sorry. I apologize for how little I want to apologize. <laughs> That still counts. All right. So, yeah, you guys can uh, go on there, rate and review this podcast. Helps us out. A whole ton, and also be sure to subscribe. Uh, well, in the meantime, you guys have been just goddamn so fucking fine and fun and funky fresh, and we have been dead. Let's say it at the same time. And, and lovely. lovely. Good night, folks. Goodbye.